happened on the job our uh, podcast for entertaining and sometimes relevant contract uh, conversations with contractors today with us we have uh, Raymond Gray from a1 plumbing Raymond how you doing sir I'm doing good now uh, it's actually a1 a1 service total service plumbing my apologies got it. and uh, you got a couple guys with you there as well right I do I have uh, Thomas Allen who is my um, general manager who basically runs the company because I don't know how. And <laughs> then I got Mario. Uh, Mario is with us. He's our outside sales manager because I don't know how to sell. So, you know, <laughs> I got these guys that make up the team. Well, they tell you, right? Know what you're good at and know what you're not good at. It's probably more important to know what you're not good at, right? And bring the bring the people around you. Yeah, you know, I'm married just like, you know, most guys are, so I'm not good for shit. <laughs> <laughs> So we are we are in the middle of our uh, coronavirus lockdown, the middle of the COVID nineteen. Uh, so we're doing this via phone, and um, wanted to uh, just give you a chance to kind of let us know a little bit about what you guys do and, and where you're at, and and how you got how you got started in this industry. Sure. So uh, my uh, grandfather and great grandfather steamship pipe fitters. Uh, my dad had got himself into trouble. Uh, early on, you know, I got young parents. They were 14 and 15 when I was born. Wow. But uh, my dad got in trouble and uh, ended up becoming a service plumber. Um, so I ended up becoming a service plumber. Um, and so now we're four generations of pipe fitters and plumbers. Wow. So you're kind of born into it, huh? Yeah, pretty much. Um, it's kind of in my blood. It's, yeah. it's what I know. Now, did you go to any school or anything to to kind of learn any of the trade, or was it just all hands on? I imagine from a pretty young age that you were uh, brought in and, and just learning on the fly. Yeah, so uh, for me, for the way I learned is uh, all hands on. Uh, school of hard knocks. Get your ass under the house and get the house replumbed before I get back from the bar, or you're going to get a beating. <laughs> That's one way to do it, right? Learn, learn, learn it under pressure. Yep, I've I've had to refine my uh, communication skills with the technicians that we have nowadays because it's not uh, you can't just take them out back and beat them anymore you have to you have to entice them with money or something else right right <laughs> gotta be a little little softer these days I, I imagine a L- little bit a little bit so how you're long gonna you... hit them with something they're not looking <laughs> <laughs> how long you guys how long you guys been in business now what do you, and, and what do you guys are you servicing more commercial residential what are you guys doing so <clears throat> I've been in business since uh, 2004. Um, I went out and got my contractor's license for my 30th birthday, basically, and started running my company legit. Um, our company's broken up into a couple different um, areas. We have our service plumbers that go out and do residential, commercial uh, service plumbing, anything from we'll come in and repair or replace your faucet, or we'll come in and replumb your whole house or business. Um, then we have the new construction side that's uh, ran by my by Brad Strickland. Uh, he's uh, uh, basically family to me. Uh, I grew up learning plumbing from him when he was working with my dad. They, you know, they worked together for thirty plus years now. Um, oh shoot, probably forty plus years now. It's a long time. Um, but uh, he runs the uh, all the new new construction plumbers and installing crew that goes out and does all the plumbing and installs for bigger projects. And then we have um, then we have our jetting, camera, and preventative maintenance division that takes care of all the preventative maintenance for residential and commercial. And then we have our, our my main crew that I run personally, which is our lining crew, that goes out and does uh, all of our CIPP, epoxy coatings, uh, polyurea coatings, trenchless uh, applications for residential commercial industrial sewer gas and water so you're actually out in the field actually running crews as well yeah i i'm not a i'm not a computer guy i'm not an office guy I, i'm the guy i've always been the guy with any company i've worked with that goes out in the field and just makes stuff happen i i sell the jobs i set the jobs up and i communicate with the crew to make sure the jobs get done and i go out there and I might be the owner, but I'm not too good to grab a shovel and dig a ditch. Yeah, and I imagine that probably keeps morale in your in your company pretty high too. Seeing that oh, the yeah. guy running the thing is is willing to get his hands dirty and get out there with you as well. Well, my my management staff has to live by one very 
strict rule. Don't ask anybody to do something you can't do or have Don't ask anybody to do something you can't do, haven't done, or won't do yourself. If you're not willing to do it, you can't get others to do it either. Yeah, no, I think that's great. And, and I would imagine that's that, that your employees probably appreciate that, appreciate that, uh, that piece or that side of you guys as well. Yeah. Yeah. M- most of the senior guys know that you better not let me dig too long. You better grab that shovel and start getting it done. <laughs> if I, so it's okay but, to walk by yeah. and say hi, but don't stand there and stare at me while I dig. Right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, but you, if, if I'm pissed off and I'm in that hole, just slinging dirt, or whatever I'm doing, just let me stay down. Let, let, let me be out <laughs> before we uh, move to the next step. Right, right. <laughs> and speaking of employees, how, how many you guys got now, and and what is what does turnover look like? What does retention look like? How are you guys going about, you know, finding people? I know that that's probably you know, believe it or not, contractors. slowed down a little bit, um, but we're still hiring. We're still hiring quality people. Uh, still looking for talent. Looking for guys that that want a career path. Um, as a matter of fact, we we did get rid of three guys, but not because of the coronavirus. We got rid of them because they just weren't what we were looking for. But we've already hired two guys in their replacements and and moving onward and up, uh, onward and upward. Yeah, what do you mean? I mean, I would imagine this particular situation hasn't slowed you guys down too much, being that you're doing a lot of service and preventative maintenance stuff. Is that is that probably true? Yeah, residential services slowed down probably by fifty percent. Um, but that's probably more because people are not sure how to approach that or, or bring you guys inside, right? Not so much that you can't or won't do it. Exactly. And yeah. and I, we have told our technicians and helpers that if they go to somebody's house and you can clearly see they're sick or acting sick, you have to use your best judgment. We're not going to tell you to go in their house. And if you don't feel comfortable doing it, then don't do it. Yeah. From the construction side, are you guys still bidding work or or – you know, starting new jobs or are you just kind of just finishing the ones out that you had going and, and, and kind of wait and see? We, I have, I have jobs scheduled out all year. A few of them have gotten pushed, which made it easier now to complete what we already have, but will definitely make it difficult as, as this whole virus thing starts to wrap up, hopefully by next month, because these people are, I get texts daily now from, uh, people I have contracts with, you know, make sure I'm on your schedule, make sure you're here, make sure you're there. We're going to do this in October. We're going to do this on this day. And so we're really going to focus now. We're focusing on making sure everybody's cross-trained on the lining and and commercial crew so that uh, when this does hit, we can divide the crew up with helpers even even more than we normally would uh, so we can tackle these projects. Yeah, just divide and conquer and get all that stuff. Yeah. Cause I mean, it's probably the same for, for pretty much everybody in this industry. It's as soon as the, the green lights given, it's, uh, it's going to be yeah. tons of work out there for yeah, everybody. Backlog of work that's building up as we speak, I'm sure. Well, ho- hopefully our president's correct when he said that, uh, he thinks the econ- economy will bounce back faster than expected. Yeah. I imagine it has to just given the, the speed of technology of everything else that, that, that happens, I, I think things happen a lot quicker relative to the past, regardless of the situation, yeah, economy well, being one of them. And I'm sure, especially on the residential side with so many people with toilet paper and flushable wipes, <laughs> you guys will be working quite a bit, if not working uh, very soon, trying to clean stuff out. Well, you, you don't know how valuable your toilet is until you can't take a shit. Yep. So. Yep. That's very true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, w- go back into the the employees a little bit are you guys do you guys have like a you know a, a uniform training program that you guys put put guys through are you looking for guys with no experience so you can train them or you know some experience so that you can put them into certain positions or how how are you guys going about developing that that uh, uh employee? that is uh that is thomas's uh forte my forte is to yell and scream until I get compliance. He's a he's a little more political about that, so I let him a softer touch. <laughs> yeah, he, I, I let him run and and manage uh, all the new hires and technicians that come in. And basically, what I do is after he's brought them in and they start working good, if I want one of the guys for the lining crew, then I'll just walk into the meeting one day, grab him by his hair, and pull him out like a caveman style. <laughs> <laughs> You're mine now. Yep. So Thomas can tell you more about the, how he trains and sets that stuff up. Yeah. 
So pretty much what I'd like to do is to hire a character versus the experience sometimes because guys do grow bad habits. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And even if you've had five, ten years of experience, you may still not be what I'm looking for as far as character and, and where we're going to take the company. But I like to hire the character. And yes, we do have a, a training program where you're going to be with a technician helping them, learning on the job each day in a bunch of different scenarios. It's so almost... I would rather have the guy that's a hardworking guy that shows up that's committed at least one, one, two years of what it takes to build a career, not just a paycheck. Right. Uh, how, how are you determining that character? Is that, you know, is that based off referrals or are you just, you know, gut instinct first time you meet them? How, how's that? Uh, how are you determining that? Just interview. You know, I kind of want to know a little bit about your family, your past, where you've been, you know, sometimes uh, somebody with some tough knocks, you know, they're, hun they're hungry. They, they, they want to work. If you've been sitting at home playing video games for, for the last four years, you won't make it in this industry. <laughs> so true. So true. If you, if you don't know how to operate a shovel, this isn't the place to learn. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, mean so you... I, I actually did hire a guy, and I did the first part, and I, threw, and I threw him the shovel, and I stood over there next to the owner, and I watched him, and he put his right foot on the left side of the shovel, and he slipped off. Oh, then he put the left foot on the right side of the shovel and flipped off. And the old man looked at me, and I almost died laughing. He said, do we need to give him instruction? <laughs> <laughs> Did they even write an instruction manual for a shovel? <laughs> and the kid, the kid was 23 years old. He made, he made it a couple hours, and I asked him, so what possessed you to be a plumber? He said, my mom made me get a job. Perfect. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah. That's, At 23 that's, years old. Mom yeah. made me get a job. Let me, a, let me see if Amazon has shovels for dummies for sale. <laughs> right, right. So when you guys do so, this interview process, are you, is it a, you know, are they interviewing with multiple people so you can kind of cross-reference your, your experiences or are you the end all be all? Sometimes yes. You know, sometimes yes or, or I got a good feeling about you and I kind of lay it out, you know, of what I expect and if you can't, live up to that well then obviously we're going to part company but uh, i'm pretty straightforward in what i need and it's the hard work and being part of a you know because we're, we're family here you know i think each of us do have family that work here so well that makes if sense if you're not in I, I don't need you just pulling a paycheck right right yeah and it's that that team that team building thing. And then the, uh, the morale that we kind of point back to is when everybody's pulling their weight, it makes it a little bit easier to, to get things done. I'm sure. So, so you guys, yeah, I, I like, go ahead. I, I like, I like to be up front with the guys and let them know what I expect each day. Some days are going to be really busy and some days are going to be light. So it's not being, being a part of here. It's not just about plumbing. Some days we're tearing apart trucks. Some days we're working at our new shop that we're building. Uh, some days we're pulling weeds out back. So it could be a little bit of everything. Yeah, yeah, find and work it. Uh, I'm sure there's always something to do for sure. I was in restaurant business for a long time, and they always told us our, our motto uh, in the restaurant business was, uh, from a management standpoint, was if you got time to lean, you got time to clean. Nobody really liked to hear that that one very often because they knew if they were holding up a wall because there wasn't much to do, I was going to throw them a rag and say, "Go ahead and find, <laughs> go ahead and clean that wall that you're holding up." Well, yeah, I but it, I mean, it is true. I mean, in order, I mean, our, our our offices do get dirty, the bathrooms do get dirty, and unfortunately, I'm not hiring a cleaning staff, so not when I have uh, you know five, six good good young strapping men. They could do <laughs> bathroom duty, floor duty, and window duty. Right. And I, and I think that's where that, that character and integrity kind of comes into play. You know what I mean? They're, they're not yep. there just to pick up the paycheck to do what they've been hired to do. They've been hired to actually work for the company and make it better and stronger, cleaner, whatever that takes. And if that means cleaning the toilets, <laughs> you got to clean the toilets, you know? <laughs> so, but what we're teaching out in the field is very valuable. I mean, we're, we're building them a career while you're getting paid. Right. You know, that, you know that's, that's the best part of it. If you so, want to learn, this, this is a place to learn. 
Yeah, no, for sure. And, and, I, and I think that's key in, in all the most successful organizations is, is developing that talent. I mean, it, anybody can go out there and hire a guy with 20 or 30 years experience, but you're not going to get the, like you said, the family unit type of uh, team building and all that kind of stuff that, that kind of helps you be successful. So I kind of, I, obviously we have a vision of, of how you, you got there, but what, what, what was, were there one or two points along the, the way? And this is probably more towards Raymond that, uh, you know, critical points, I guess that you might call them um, from just starting up to, to where you're at now that, you know, you, you could have gone one way, but you went the other way. And, and, you know, you now you're at a, at a, at a position where, you're, you know, you've obviously grown quite a bit. It, you know, kind of speak to some of those decisions that you had to make along the way that, that maybe got you there. Sure. So, uh, before I answer that question, I, I checked in multiple different places, and I'm glad to say that uh, humanity is not so stupid they had to write a stupid book for dummies on how to use a shovel. <laughs> <laughs> At least not that I found. There was, there was, there was <laughs> some in-game research there, huh? Yeah, I was doing it while you were talking to Thomas. I was like, I wonder if there's a book for shovels for dummies. And there, there's not. That's there's good. Not. That's good. That, that, that's God. good. So Thomas has worked with me for a lot of years. He actually knew my mom, um, worked with my mom in Laughlin, Nevada, actually, for a few years before he moved out to California. And me and him had worked together for, for multiple years before we uh, split company. And we split company because we were working for a company together. And he went one way, I went the other. Um, I had decided that I didn't want to work for other companies I, that didn't fit my vision of uh, – what plumbing was and and a lot of these companies look i like to sell jobs don't don't get me wrong i i, I get a i get high off of selling jobs and making sales and writing contracts and doing big cool stuff and and early on in my years i used to just sell jobs to homeowners and i i uh did the best i could to make sure that customers were educated before i started and, and had the sign on the dotted line but um you know, I didn't want to be like other companies and just sell jobs to sell jobs and tell customers stuff that wasn't true and, and lie to them. And, and Thomas was the same way. So now that we've grown and, and, and or where I started at was residential service repair. And I got this crazy idea to start a company and I bought some equipment and got into CIPP. And, you know, now I've grown to the point where I just can't do it all myself. And Thomas took over the service side and running the service plumbers and and making sure that we keep integrity, honesty, and quality uh, very high on the list of, of how we move forward. And we and uh, now we have uh, Mario with us who goes out and works with the guys, sell jobs, and he's on the same page. You know, if, if we can't get do integrity and quality, then let somebody else come in and do the job. Yeah, and I think that's that's probably speaks to why you guys were able to grow too. I'd imagine. From a marketing standpoint, are you guys working more off referrals, or you guys do you guys have a call center that's calling out, or how how are you guys going about finding, especially from the residential service side? Well, so that, God, that's a, there's a big answer to that. So before these guys all came to work for me, you know, I ran the company very hands on. Uh, so I've built a customer base, and to this day, customers will call me on my phone. Hey, Raymond, your guy came out and he's great, but I think I'm paying too much. What can you do for me on the price? And so, you know, I, everybody still has my cell phone number. They're welcome to call me anytime and, and go over several customers. Um, but uh, just the last couple of years, we've actually had to start spending money on advertising because we've grown to the point where even the referrals don't keep up with keeping the guys busy like they used to. Um, but we definitely have a very, very large commercial repeat base uh, from property managers to industrial properties, um, just it never ends. It never ends. They, they, you know, we've had a few people not use us for a while because our prices are a little bit higher, and they went and hired another company. But nine out of ten times they come back. They come back because of the service over the price all day long. Yeah, that's. I mean, I, you can't can't put a price on not having to. Well, I mean, I guess you probably can not having to call somebody back out and have fixed right and, and do it right the second time. Uh, let's do it right the first time and get paid yeah. once. Can't 
Can't get paid for doing it wrong twice. <laughs> well, and this question might be more for Mario and kind of <clears throat> piggybacking off that last statement. Mario, what's your process then if you guys are actually going outside of just referrals? What's your process for picking up those sales to keep the guys moving? The guys, they're basically going out and doing their service calls. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of customers that don't have uh, clean outs. Uh, they don't have other, other areas of their pipes inspected. So when they go out, they have me come out and kind of do a full inspection of their pipes underneath their homes all the way out to the street, all the branch lines. And you, you'll be surprised how many problems you find uh, in the rest of the draining system uh, besides the original problem that we're there for. So you guys are getting a lot of, a lot of upsells, I guess, if you will, from, yeah. your, from your service work from the residential side? Correct. Yes, we are. Um, some, some drains haven't been maintained for a long time, which allows uh, buildup, uh, roots, to get into the line and do some damage, and they might not—it might not be a problem at the time or, or while we're there, but we're able to find other problems that are are going to happen. And my job is to let the customers know of the, my findings so that they can make a decision on, on addressing it. Well, that makes sense. That makes sense. Well, and I think it helps—you know—you're educating your consumer and your customer as opposed to you know, uh, just getting out there and putting a bandaid on the problem. And I imagine probably sometimes <clears throat> some of those issues that they're facing uh, might be uh, related in some way to some of those bigger problems that you guys are unearthing when you're out there. Yeah. You know, when people can't afford to do the big job, we're okay with doing the small job and we're okay with just doing the preventative maintenance and coming back, you know, eventually the big job is going to have to get done. So, you know, we keep the keep the customer happy, make them know that they're a priority, and uh, do the preventative maintenance as long as we can, as much as we can for them to keep them keep them running, no matter what it is. Even if it's patching two or three feet of pipe at a time, if that's what they can afford, that's the way we got to do it. Right, right. Are you guys? Uh, I would imagine if if ideal, you you'd probably focus on both. But uh, are you? And it sounds like you probably have a lot more service work or PM work right now, preventative maintenance work right now than you do have construction. Are you, are you looking to do more construction? Are you happy with the amount of construction you're doing or how, you know, how much of that split? What's, what's the ideal split there for you guys? I don't care about the ideal split. I care about make one, making money and keeping my guys busy. But mainly as if we can service a plot, uh, service, another contractor or a client, whatever way they need to be serviced, as long as, as long as everybody can stay happy and profitable, we'll do, we'll do any type of plumbing work. Uh, like I said, water, sewer, gas, duct lines, you know, it, we'll service them, we'll fix them, we'll do them on whatever scale it is. You find that you guys are going in, especially on the construction side, are you going in as a subcontractor, somebody hires you to, to fix the plumbing, or do you guys more often go in to fix the plumbing and then you're, you know, running the rest of the job as far as, you know, the patch and the paint and everything else. It, you know, it just depends. We, we do offer a full service. Um, so uh, customer calls up, has a, has a leak. They decide that fixing the leak isn't for them because they've had multiple leaks. We sell them a repipe, let's say. Right. We sell them the repipe. Now they want... They're, well, can you guys do the drywall and paint and do the repairs? The answer is yes. Well, we'll I have a B license as well as my C36, um, and we will have guys come in and do the full repair, and the customer only has to deal with us. You know, now there's a premium price to that. If the customer is willing to pay it, we're willing to do it. Um, and we do, we do sub out like some of our drywall, and you know, we just have too many jobs going on. We're, we're our, our two construction guys can't keep up with that all the time. Yeah. So sometimes we do send that stuff out to somebody else, but the customer only deals with us and, and we deal with all subcontractors to make sure everybody gets paid in a timely fashion. Yeah, probably about quite a bit easier on the, from the uh, consumer side on that as well. Yeah. Oh, huge. They only have to develop a relationship with us. <laughs> they only know how to call us. We keep them as our customer. And at the end of the day, they didn't have the headache of having to cut multiple checks to multiple people. And if something goes wrong, they call us and we fix it right away. 
Yeah. yeah. So from a from a forecasting standpoint, because you guys are kind of mixed in in both aspects, are you what what is what does forecasting look like for you guys? How, how far out are you guys looking and 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 creating budgets and and you know forecasting your sales and everything else and labor? Um. No, that's not even a question for me. I need to call my finance guy. <laughs> <laughs> Especially now, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> Um, we'll do three or four months for scheduling. Yeah, yeah uh, for, for our bigger jobs, we're probably three or four months out for scheduling. On some bigger projects, even bigger than that, um, I have stuff, like I said, I have stuff lined out all year long already on the, for the lining crew. Um, hopefully by this time next year, if all goes well, we should be opening another, another shop in uh, the Orange County area, moving, moving south towards uh, San Diego. We have to come by and hang out then. Yeah, man. You're That's right around the corner at. from us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So where, where are you guys at? We're uh, we're on Foothill Ranch. Technically, our office is in Foothill Ranch, which is kind of by Lake Forest. Yes, yeah, so smack it. dab in South Orange County. Yep, yeah, right in the middle. Yep. Yeah, right a couple of middle. our guys look. Go ahead. I said a couple of our guys live down that way. Oh, okay. okay. Cool. I'll make it easier for you. Yeah. So from a, from a forecasting standpoint, it sounds like you're, you're able to keep your guys busy as much as you can and, and not have to worry about fluctuation in, in your, in your payroll and your, in your employee counts, which I'm sure makes, makes it a lot easier keeping guys busy. Yeah. Well, the guys stay busy. It's not, you know, some of the main crews that are on jobs all the time are kind of picking up the slack right now for what the service guys can't do because, like I said, it has slowed down by a little bit. But uh, trust me, payroll payroll makes me uh, payroll makes me stomach sick every week. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine right now it's probably even tougher. You guys, how are you guys managing? I know you said you had to had to lay off a few guys. Are you uh, are you trying to keep as many of your guys employed to uh, you know? kind of keep them on payroll and not have to worry about rehiring them when it's back? How are you guys managing all that with, with the slowdown right now? Well, well, well let's be clear. We haven't laid off anybody. Oh, Nobody's okay. been laid off here. Not at all. We've terminated a couple. Oh, that's right. I apologize. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And the replacement. So, right. Yeah. Right. We've terminated a couple, just they weren't a fit here at the company and I don't, I don't get along well with lazy people. So unfortunately we had to let them go and, and, but where we've let some go, we've already, you know, we've let three go in the last week and a half, and we've hired two to replace them already. So, you know, and we're still hiring. Like, you, you got good people that want to be in the trade and, and have good character, and, you know, we're willing to look at them and, and give them a shot. So, you know. Are you guys, yeah, so that's, that's, that makes it even easier for you then, I'm sure. Have you guys looked into uh, the, uh, the payroll protection? Are you guys, is that something that's, that's, uh, I know a lot of people have said it's been kind of hard to to navigate that. Is that something you guys have looked into? Uh, well, that's again, that's what I'm like, I just made a couple minutes ago. I'd have to call my finance guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I, actually, my wife my wife works for the government, and um, uh, she's into the medical field of the government. But. Uh, she is uh, working from home right now, so she's working with our finance and accounting uh, people and our CPA to make sure that that stuff gets done the proper way. Awesome. Um, if you left it to me, it'd be a piece of paper with scribbled crayon on it and say, please loan me money. <laughs> <laughs> what I know about finance. <laughs> it kind of so, goes back. He knows what he, what he lacks, and so he brings on the right people. Yep, yep. Are we supposed to be talking about plumbing anyway? <laughs> <laughs> we like to be well-rounded here. We like to see all sides of it. <laughs> well, hey, yeah, I mean, look, I'm not a finance guy at all. I'm a plumber. I'm, I'm a plumber by nature. I'm a plumber by trade. That's what I know. That's what I'm really good at. You know, I, I do. I do freak my office staff out. We have Maria, who's our our office manager. She keeps tracks of accounts payable, accounts receivable, and. She really freaks out. Sometimes I'll call her up and be like, hey, you got a deposit for me today, right? And she's like, well, well, yeah, how'd you know? I go, well, I figured the money would be coming in plus the jobs. What, what do we got? 40000 going in the bank? She goes, 38900 I go, close enough. Thanks, bye. And, and, I'll, and I'll hang it. She really finds it strange that I'm able to kind of run the finances of the company by the seat of my pants and no money in, money out. 
But when it comes to doing a balance sheet, guys, I have no – like I can't even tell you what a balance sheet looks like. Yeah, no, I mean that's – like you said before, right? Know what you're good at and, and uh, bring the rest of the people in to, to supplement. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So when, when it comes to, you know, like you, you were mentioning about those three guys that you had to terminate, when it, when it comes to making, and that might not have been a difficult decision, but that's, <laughs> I, when you guys are running decisions and trying to figure out, you know, how you're best going to move forward, is, it, is that something that you, Mario, and Thomas work out? Is that just you and Thomas kind of figure out the best approach? What's that approach in terms of making either a difficult dec- decision with your personnel or, um, you know, just on the business in yeah. general, how to, how to move. Yeah. Well, let's, um, so th- there's a good conversation in that because, you know, sometimes th- there's times when I'll walk in the office and I'll just tell Maria process them out. And then I'll poke my head in Thomas's office. I'm like, that dude is out of here. And Thomas is like, all right. And no, I don't do that a lot, but it does happen. So this morning I walk into the shop and uh, I was at the new shop with Thomas this morning uh, getting uh, getting some stuff squared away. We're getting ready to move to a a shop that's three and a half times the size of the one we're in now. Wow. And uh, I bought the property, been remodeling it. But uh, I so I come into the the original shop. Uh, Mario's in here having a conversation with Maria and he comes out and I'm like, hey, I need to talk to you about something. I, I was talking to Thomas about this this morning, but we're 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 thinking about taking employee A out of his truck and putting the new guy in there. And uh, Mario looks at me and he goes, yeah, I'm probably not the right guy to make that decision. I said, Mario, I'm not asking you for, to make the decision. I'm asking you for your opinion. Well, the reason Mario didn't want to make the decision or give his opinion on it is because employee B just happens to be his son who we just hired to work here as a technician. So, so we all have family that works inside this family. So, so Thomas has his daughter who works here in our office. She works in dispatch. Okay. Our dispatch manager, Alex has his sister who works in another part of the company that, but he kind of oversees her. I have my dad who works here. I have my uncle who works here. I have my daughter who works here. I also have my oldest son who works here. So now Mario, who's another manager, now has his son who works here. So even, like we said, we're all family. We all treat each other as family, but we also all have some blood and skin in the game now as family in here. So not being a biased person and being unbiased about who comes and goes is very important on how we hire, terminate, and promote, and stuff like that. You know, um, I have one of my managers in the field who is Nick, and 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 uh, it's, his name is Marlon, but we call him Fish. You know, Marlon's a fish, and we call him the stinky fish. But uh, <laughs> he's one of the field managers on the lining crew, and my son works under him. I don't tell my son what to do. I barely talk to my son about work. It all goes through managers. That way, nothing can be mis- misconstrued about showing favoritism. So right. um, a, 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 a hire is usually Thomas's decision depending on who's getting hired for what. Um, and depending on where that person is in the company, either in dispatch or in the field or, or whatever, uh, termination comes with a, a team of guys who decide to get rid of a person. So when, it, when a team does it, it makes it easier to get rid of them because we all know that we all feel the same and it's not just the opinion of one person. Yeah, that makes sense. And I'm sure that, that team approach probably helps too with, with from the family aspect to – from a from a from a hard feelings sort of uh, way, if 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 and when you ever have to get to that point, you know what I mean. Hopefully, well, uh, when it comes to terminating a person, the good thing about the team that we have is before we get rid of somebody, just to get rid of them, we'll usually move them around in the company to like either a plumber's truck, um, another field position, to see if they're going to mesh better with somebody else than they are the person that they're working with now to see if we can actually get the performance out of them and that they're trainable and make them a better technician or better helper um, before we have to make the decision to terminate. Yeah, which is smart because it's, I mean, I'm sure you guys know too, but it's worth saying that, you know, bringing somebody else on, there's there's a lot of overhead and costs that, that are involved with bringing on a new employee and getting them to a certain level. So anything you can do. To- Average cost, hire an employee, process a man, Get them in the field. The, my initial investment is about two thousand dollars per employee. Just yes. initial investment without doing anything but hiring them. 
Yeah. And then, and then the, the cost of the, you know, cause there's obviously going to be a cost in, in labor from uh from an efficiency standpoint when you're training somebody versus, you know, the guy just doing it on his own. So, yeah. you know, you have that cost as well over time. So yeah, it's, it's, yeah. It, if a employee doesn't stay for at least a year, it's a loss for us. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't want to get rid of a guy if we don't have to. We'd like to retrain them, move them around, see what they're good at, see what they're not good at. And everything they're good at, we want to exploit it and make it better. And everything they're not good at, we want to work on and make that better. Right. Yeah, that's awesome. So, I mean, you obviously sound like a guy who's uh, might have a few uh, few fun stories for us, or at least one. Is there there's something that uh, – not that you haven't been entertaining already, but – uh, something that you can uh, that give us that that might bring a little bit of laugh or or uh, humor to somebody that might be listening. Uh, when Thomas was in the field, he fell in a septic tank. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. So no build up, no nothing. We're just getting right to it Maybe on that one. That yeah, on. we're gonna need to hear a little bit more about how that happened. That's not something uh, you can yeah. just drop like that. <laughs> Thomas was not being safe. He was walking around a hole and slipped on a septic tank. That's, I mean, there's no other way to put that, but, but he fell in. And it, and it was full. Like, yeah, at least he could have waited until after it was pumped, right? Oh, no, it was, it, it was, it was to the lid. Yeah. Oh, was, man. <laughs> I don't even – I mean, what do you do? So they dug it out, <laughs> dug it out, popped it off, started walking around it, couldn't wait for the pump truck, and I guess he was hot and needed a bath, and, <laughs> and it goes. I have well, to not exactly that. down, but uh, it's kind of entertaining. Come on, that's the funny version. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot even Bad imagine. Was, I had to drive home in my stinky underwear, throw away all my clothes, my phone was toast, my wallet was toast, yeah. and then try to explain to the wife why I'm coming home naked. <laughs> really bad. But, but yeah. you know what the crappy part really is? What? No pun intended. <laughs> his, his, underwear, his underwear wasn't stinky because he found the tank. <laughs> <laughs> He's just trying to cover up. <laughs> yeah. And I, yeah, I don't know that I would want to keep or, I mean, I, I, I might burn the truck after that too that I drove home in. That's Listen, not a... I, I got a really good story for you. I got, I'll give you two quick ones. So I grew, up, I grew up in a family of plumbers. In my younger years, we would go to homes that were full of sewage underneath because a sewer pipe would break. Ugh. And my dad would wrap me in plastic bags and duct tape, <coughs> put a snorkel on me, and tell me to get underneath there, find the pipe, dig it out, break a hole in it so it would relieve the pressure and it would drain underneath the house. Okay? I'm, so, I'm, I'm quickly regretting asking you for stories at this point. <laughs> <laughs> So, so I've always had the mentality, companies that I've worked for in the past, and Thomas will vouch for this one. So one year, my boss comes to me and goes, hey, I got two brand new helpers for you. I said, okay. He goes, I want you to take them out in the field on that job you're working on today. I'm like, yeah, okay, sure, no problem. I was working on a house that was flooding underneath, so I did what my dad did to me. I went out, except I, I did one better. I went out and bought rain suits. I put the rain suits on them and I duct taped them up and I threw them a snorkel and a, and a mask and I said, get underneath there and dig the mud out. Make a path so the water drains into the pipe. I had broke the pipe the day before. So it wasn't as bad as what my dad had done to me. I said, when you guys are done, completely done, come out. I'll have some water out. I'm going to go to another job. Take your suits off. Like I spelled it out. These guys didn't last the day. I came back four hours later. They were kind of done. And they were sitting outside in the heat, in the sun, stinking to high heaven, never took the rain suits off or were completely dehydrated. Ooh. That was the last time I broke a helper in that way. <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, uh, I, 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 you have no worries. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> I feel like asking, asking a plumber for a story in the future is probably not, uh, not in the cars. No, that's, that's. <laughs> I uh, commend well, you, what you guys do, I, and I'm I, uh, thank thankful. God for you. <laughs> yeah, thankful there. But are. most people, most people don't. Most people haven't been in the business as long as we have, um, and, and and been around the block as many times as we have. You can have a guy that's been in plumbing for 20 years, and some of the stuff we've done and how we've had to make jobs happen 
most people just haven't done it that way. And, and I'll tell you right now, if my dad was in on this conversation, it'd be a lot more colorful than it is right now. <laughs> I imagine, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, we're going to let you guys go. I know this was, this was round two for us. Um, I don't know. We didn't, we didn't really mention it at the beginning, but we, uh, we had a snafu the first time and had to, had to redo this. So we want to, we want to really thank you guys again and, uh, for, for coming on again and, and letting us, let us put you through this again, but it's been fun. Um, let, let, let everybody know that's listening for real this time instead of, uh, you know, that we're going to throw in the trash can like we did last time, but, uh, or let me clarify, we didn't throw it in the trash can. It got thrown in the trash can. Um, let everybody know where you guys are at, how to find you guys, and and uh, what you got in, how to get a hold of you. Okay, so um, our corporate name is A1 Total Service Construction Inc. Uh, we are a, uh, I'm a licensed master plumber, but I'm also licensed by the state of California for uh, our C36 plumbing and our B licensed uh, general contractor. Um, our DBA is A1 Total Service Plumbing, uh, which I've started back in 2004. Um, we are located in East Los Angeles. Uh, we service all of LA, Orange County, Riverside, San Bernardino uh, for residential service, commercial, industrial, and uh, CIPP, trenchless, epoxy coating. You can find us online at www.a1tsp.com uh, or you can just call the office, 888-201-8856. Uh, my name again is Raymond Gray. I'm the owner of the company and you can always reach me on my cell uh, just to talk about a job, if you have a question or concern, my cell number is 562-318-4371. And um, I don't think that was as good as it was the first time, but that's what it is. No, that's I think that good. was great. That was that might have been better than the second time around, man. That was great. Well, again, we, we appreciate you guys, Raymond, Thomas, Mario. Thanks so much for uh, taking time and uh, and speaking with us. We hope... Uh, you guys stay safe. It sounds like you guys are doing great and hopefully knock on wood. Uh, nothing else comes down and, and interferes with anything else you guys are doing or anybody else. And, and, uh, when you guys open that office, no problem. In Orange if, County, if you ever want to again, maybe we'll bring the wives in and let them have their say. Yeah. I, <laughs> <laughs> I think that's uh, like you mentioned, that might be a, a total separate podcast or construction <laughs> yeah, conversation that we do. That, that's going to be, have to be like an hour and a half long podcast. <laughs> It's going to be a little bit of time. So, and talk about some stories, like huh? There might be oh, some yeah. stories oh, on that side, huh? I have stories for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, thanks, guys. We appreciate it. Y'all be safe. Have a great day. And uh, we'll uh, we'll talk with you guys soon. And, and, again, lunch is on us when we, we can figure out how to be uh, be out there with you. No problem. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, guys. Cool, have guys. a good one. Thank you. Hey, thanks for listening. And if you've made it this far, go ahead and give us a like or five stars or whatever means you like us. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss our next episode. And check out our website for more video content and extras. While you're there, shoot us a message if you want to be a guest. We'd love to have you on. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.